All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're getting started to hop into the next game. It's going to be the Grand Finals. King Sejong Station is our first map. We don't have a map intro for this, but it's going to be between, again, Scarlet and Billowy. Uh, taking a little bit of a look at their stats. As we try and hop over there. Here we go. Scarlet versus Billowy. Both of these two players, I think a lot of people will be a little bit more familiar with them. Uh, Scarlet maybe a little bit more so, and has actually had a bit more success. And taking a look at the match history that these two have. Uh, they did play in the Doyu Cup. I think Scarlet was mentioning this. They played uh, a couple days ago, and Scarlet managed to take that series two to one. Mm -hmm. So she's feeling confident. Yeah. Interested to see where this is gonna go as we go ahead and get ready to hop into the game. Oop. Wrong screen. And we'll cut out the music. All right, that was not as smooth as I, I, I had like this awesome hype up music and everything. I was trying to use the stat screen. I thought it would sound really cool and look really cool, but it didn't. Regardless, we'll try it again another time. <laughs> Spawning up here at the top left-hand corner of the map, we have the pink Zerg player from Canada. Give it up for Scarlet. In the bottom right, as the red Protoss, he is Billowy. All right, King Sejong Station, PVZ, Scarlet. Is she gonna all in or is she gonna try and play perfectly? I feel like that's always the name of the game with Scarlet. <laughs> um, well, considering, okay, so versus Taryn, we mentioned that she might not be super confident. Well, she doesn't super complain that much about Taryn, but if there is <laughs> one race she complains about, <laughs> it's definitely still Protoss, which, I mean, it, it's funny to, I guess, hear like moan and groan okay. all the time, but. Um, she she complains about Protoss. Like, she was complaining about Protoss when Protoss had, like, a 35% win rate versus Zerg. Like, right? It's, exactly. it's never ending from her. It's like, I think it's, like, the only equivalent I can think of. And I won't really say it's so much in complaining as much as it is just in terms of, like, struggling. Is you thermal versus, like, Zerg? Even when, like, Terrans are doing well versus Zergs, I still feel like you thermal is just like, God damn it, Zerg. Yeah. It Everyone has it, I suppose, and yeah. I feel like just maybe it's because we actually like talked to her now, but I don't know. But like maybe she just <laughs> had it from the beginning <laughs> against Protoss. That's why she plays it. You gotta learn to love your enemy, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but she's just been like really uh, oddly vocal, I suppose. And it is, if it's still the same as it was like a month ago, it's it's the immortal that she really hates. So. <laughs> <laughs> but you're gonna see in most EVPs. So. Used to it. Although they were recently nerfed, maybe that changed her opinion on them. That is true, um, and one of the big things about that nerf is that uh, because the immortal shields are have like so much reduced health, it's all about the ravager shots because it's, it's not really a big nerf against like sustained, consistent, and small bits of damage over a period of a fight. It's about that large, large uh, like spur of DPS that comes out from ravager shots. Uh, looks like we do have a I think it was Zergen kills. Yeah, just a couple yeah. things. Thanks to Mier in nineteen eighty nine for the fifteen month resub. Woo! Fifteen months. Yeah. Fifteen <clears> years. So, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Skylight is going for uh, just a handful of links to, again take care of Billowy's to adept opener. It seems like I he really likes this opener, I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's jam. Super jam as well. Maybe they're you know both being on a figure freaks. Uh, it's just how they like to play. And they get into the main base, really want to see what's going on because, I mean, Zerg in general has a ton of opportunities to cheese and, and all in and macro game, of course, as well. Oh. And Scarlet is a player that does, does all of the above. Yeah, one thing I really like about what Billowy is doing is he's doing what a lot of Protoss players don't do, which is retreating after you get the scouting information with your adepts. And I, I really love when Protoss players do this because keeping those adepts alive, it just adds in a little bit more to whatever pushing you try and do a little bit later on, or heck, even just the defense, which I know that we saw a PBZ earlier on this map. It can kind of be hard to defend your third expansion as a Protoss player trying to take that. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, even back in Heart of the Swarm, when you weren't like really eager to get a third base, you still had to take it like a little bit later and a little bit more cautious, mm -hmm. but I was oohing and aahing because that Twilight Council was followed up by a bunch of gateways, mm -hmm. and that Robo is basically going to be used for a War Prism, and this could be a lot of damage. 
It could also be like zero damage. If they run into Banelings, if she actually has Banelings prepared because she feels like something's wrong and then, you know, something's up, mm -hmm. then the Adepts will just, you know, <laughs> fly pretty damn quick. And she hasn't gotten super great scouting yet. She sees like one gas not taken, but she hasn't gotten to the main base yet. Uh, she might not have those Banelings prepared. Yeah. It's uh, definitely going to be a little bit of a tense situation. It's going to come a lot down to the micro as well as a little bit of decision making. Oh, we got a dropper lord coming out from Scarlet. So if she doesn't know about this big push in now, she is going to know about it pretty soon. Mm -hmm. uh, is this a, is this like a fake third, you think, from I Billy? I imagine. I mean, he might put it down if he has an excess of minerals, just not make any more probes, because you know, obviously he's not. But, mm, but off of seven gateways, or sorry, oh, okay, it's only six gateways. I guess you might eventually accumulate the minerals for it. Yeah, it's always like, I, I agree though, it always seems to be like a little bit, like seven or six gateways, nexus or no nexus. Mm -hmm. The point is, it's still an all-in, because I mean, you stop making probes. This nexus isn't going to be mining for a very long time, and will most likely have um, a natural, um, a main transfer. Yeah. Of probes eventually. The oh, the are here. The Banelings aren't quite ready. Oh, the Banelings are ready. So, Just getting some pretty okay hits, but not actually killing off too many of the Adepts. More Adepts coming in over here for Billy, and I like what he's doing. He's leaving a couple of the Adepts at the front, and they focus fire down those Banelings, and Scarlet has uh -oh. got nothing left. No, she does not. Just I, She just needed a lot more of everything, and certainly she's banking enough minerals and gas to mm. get a lot more, but I don't think she ever really anticipated what was going on. Very quick. One. Yeah, Billy able to take it. I want to also note that there was a Baneling drop that happened during that, uh, which is part of the reason why she had maybe a few less units than she would expect. Uh, even like some of the Banelings, she would have probably had like maybe three or four more Banelings over there, which I think actually would have been enough to clean up a lot more of those Adepts. But the fact that she was going for the counter damage across the map, it just meant that she didn't have anything back at home. I, I don't know if it would have been enough, but it definitely would have helped to have had those units there. Agreed. It, uh, also, like, on the flip side, if she had just done the drop a little bit earlier, maybe she figures out what's happening a little bit earlier. Actually, it's like Lings into the main base. What? No, Scarlet's on, on fire, not flip side. Sorry. Yeah. That, that was probably my most Rifkin moment of the entire cast. It's like unnecess that. unnecessary wordplay joke that nobody actually cares about. Oh. I didn't even, I didn't even notice you trying to slip that in there. Oh. Okay. Way to go. <laughs> Cut. All right, well, we're hopping on to our next map, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be Frost. We'll see you guys there. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're hopping into game number two in this best of five series for the grand finals of the Alima League. Spawning up here in the top right hand corner of the map, we have the pink Zerg player. Give it up for On Fire Scarlet. The bottom right, as the red Protoss, he's billowy. Okay, well. After that last game, uh, I think some of the frustration Scarlet feels toward Protoss <laughs> may be surfacing there. Um, to be fair though, Scarlet's also one of those players that like, I don't actually often, maybe, maybe it's just like the few times that I've seen her it hasn't really been the case, but I don't often see her really super tilted or like get upset or angry. Generally like when she loses to something like, oh, Protoss bullshit. She's, she seems like she's kind of happy and laughing about it. And it's like, look at how dumb this is. Like, I, it's almost like she, she's happy that she's able to prove her point. If you know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. It's almost like she's amused. Yeah. Hmm. So, uh, But I agree. I mean, that can be like a blessing and a curse, I suppose. At least she doesn't get tilted and break her keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> there, there are definitely players that don't do too well with some of the stress and pressure of that. 
Yeah. I was going to say, she's for sure the mortals add adepts to the list now. Um, <laughs> I, I think they were probably already on the list after yeah, some of the adept all ins I've seen. Yeah. I, that's a, it's actually, if it's banelings, if it's just lings, if there's actually roaches or hell, I'm going for like a super fast hydra list in, I don't know. But that adept all in is so deceiving. Like the first mm -hmm. seven adepts are not that much of a, a not big of a deal. Mm -hmm. But then that war prism instantly warps in seven more, and you're like, oh, that's actually like a lot of units. <laughs> and it's, it's the big thing about it that I think you're really hitting an important point to realize is that it looks almost identical to what a Protoss player would look like if they were doing a four gate adept pressure with a third mm -hmm. expansion and a Roboxily plus like Twilight Council coming up behind it. It looks almost exactly the same until that next first round of warp ins. And that's what's so scary about it. But ooh, Billowy. Going for the proxy pylon, might be throwing down a Twilight Council. I mean, just based on the positioning, I feel like it's going to be Twilight Council Dark Shrine or something. Yeah, I agree. I can tell you guys that Billowy isn't usually this cheesy. Um, we cast him fairly what? commonly European. Whoa. Uh, okay. Well, anyways, <laughs> Immortal we cast him fairly commonly European cups and against plenty of Zerg. I wonder if this is a reaction to losing against Scarlet, or if this is the way he played against Scarlet to begin with in the Doyu mm. Cup a couple go because she is scouting for this she's like oh you're 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 that type of protoss today okay let's take wow care of so she and he has to cancel a robo that is that is a really actually a big deal because it you have to realize that the early game for protoss is actually very very well mapped out and you really do want things to be like very much on time because a lot of it comes down to it's this weird effect in uh, starcraft where we, especially with like third expansions or just expansions in general if you take an expansion too early it can obviously be hard to defend but if you take an expansion too late also that can also be hard to defend so protoss have very specific narrow timings where they normally will take their third expansions and i think just having that tech delay that you like try to invest into that tech that would have been like an immortal or like a war prism or something to keep your opponent on the other side of the map it makes it harder to take your third now i I think it just delays a lot for Billowy, and Scarlet might even sense a little bit of weakness there. I agree. If it doesn't delay a third base, then it delays, like, you know, if he decides, like, oh, I can't, you know, hide something, I'm just going to two base push again with the depths. Mm -hmm. It delays something like that as well. So she can feel a little more at ease for, you know, maybe like 30 seconds to a minute longer. If she scouts this third base, then, you know, even longer than that, and actually play the game that she wants, which I guess she was planning on doing. She was not being more aggressive, especially as that plus one finished. But, you know, then she got attacked with the depth before that could really happen. Now it's more mm. to her game. She can do the drop, and then she can follow up however she wants. Yeah, and this is the exact same sort of drop play she went for the last game. Uh, this game, though, she's not going to be dealing with a massive flood of warp gates or anything. There is a Twilight Council and a Robot facility coming up behind this. A Resonant Glaze is coming up also, but the Warp Prism comes in with the sentries. And behind the Mineral Line... I this is like old school sentry style. Instead of going for the ramp, you go like behind the mineral line and try and kill some a couple of units where you can. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, very odd to see that, um, especially since it does absolutely nothing. It scouts lings, but lings are the basic unit. It doesn't necessarily tell Billowy that there's an all in on the way or there's a lot of lings on the way or a bailing drop in his natural. Oh, <laughs> it's gonna be the fake out and doesn't actually move in over there. And at the same time, yeah, Adept's not really able to do almost anything right now. Mm. Droning more after this. Uh, the plus one is going to finish up. I'm going to be a little supply block. That was overboard. And the lair is on the way. So Billowy didn't get his third deny, despite how many lings Scarlet made. Didn't really take any damage as he reacted very quickly to that overlord drop. And things are actually looking fine after a yeah. failed almost proxy robo. Yeah, definitely not looking too, too terrible. Uh, robotic facility, or sorry, uh, not the robotic facility. The Roach Warren is going to be coming out, though. And we'll see if Scarlet decides to follow this up. She hasn't taken a fourth expansion just yet. And yeah, there's still a bit of time to go ahead and do stuff like that. But I'm also curious, like, where do you take your fourth expansion on this map? Especially if you're playing, like, a style where you've gone for, like, the Banelings, uh, Baneling Nest. You're playing sort of, sort of that more mobile style. Do you take, like, the much further top left-hand expansion instead of the forward one? I think, hmm, mm, yeah, I think you take a top left at this point. Billowy's got enough time to get like a decent army, and as we can see, this is a very decent looking army. The forest has got to be very on oh. point to help deal with the banelings. We actually have a couple of drop overlords that are already full of banelings, so oh, this yeah. should be enough, Scarlet. 
Yeah, gonna be able to take out a lot of the sentries on the front line. Also, the other sentry is mostly going down. There are two sentries left over, though, and they do have enough energy for some more force fields. Yeah, uh, at the same time, those... drop in the natural does kill off nine workers of uh, Billowy. Those splits are surprisingly good. I thought he'd be a lot more surprised by the Overlord drops, but the Adepts didn't die. The sentries, three of them still alive is actually a Ooh. big deal. I really thought that they'd be more clumped up and that the Baneling drops Ooh. would be fantastic, but Scarlet, which is about to lose again. Roach is getting picked off as soon as they pop out of that hatchery. The hatchery is most assuredly going to go down. The question is, are the drones going to be able to escape or is it even going to matter? Scarlet's coming in with a lot of Ravagers and uh, some of these Banelings, and she's going to be able to get some pretty good hits off. At least pop in some of the shields on, I think, the Immortals, but I just don't think it's going to be enough to even clean up. Yeah, I mean, losing a base, too, is a really big deal. It's not like she's on a force she can transfer to. She lost the drone to the natural as well, so her drone kind of isn't super high. I mean, okay, you clean up the army, but this wasn't uh, something that Bibli couldn't replace. It wasn't, like, full of colossus or something. It was a lot of adepts. The Immortals could probably try and crab walk out if they want, but it's going to fight to the last. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I really do feel like Scarlet is going to be sitting at a uh, 2 deficit in this best of five series just because... Yeah, more units stream on in, and Billowy takes the game. It's so interesting watching, I guess, Snoot yesterday or the day before doing this exact same thing and looking very, very strong, even if he didn't end up losing the showtime. Mm -hmm. And then watching Scarlet like, almost get to the same type of deal, like same place, and then just not actually look as strong when push comes to shove. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think we're going to hop to a really short break, though, as we are sitting at match point. Uh, we'll be back in just a second, guys, with game number three of the Elite League number 61 finals. I also want to remind you guys during the break, if you don't want to watch the ads, go to the Patreon page for Elite League. Uh, I keep almost saying Olivia and almost saying Elite League, but uh, Twitch, or sorry, not Twitch, uh, patreon.com slash Moly. Go check it out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. First of all, I want to give a huge shout out to Mario Stanfield. I think that's what the name said. Thank you so much for the resubscription. I think it was 14 months, 14 years. Thank you so much. You're a teenager now, but here we go. Spawning up here in the top left-hand corner of the map, we have the pink Zerg player from Team On Fire. Give it up for Scarlet. The bottom right as the red Protoss. He is billowy. Yo, have there always been like these diamond things on Frozen Temple? Like in the spawn? The tiles on the ground? There's like a little shuriken. I haven't paid that much attention. There's like a shuriken on the ground. I mean, okay, calm down there. It's like a bunch of different mines. This is, this is amazing. I'm actually really, really intrigued by this now. How have I never noticed this? <gasps> oh my God, there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of really cool intricate artwork on the ground. Yeah, that's always been there. I just, I, I don't think it's that impressive. Are you high? No, this is super cool. There's like, like there's like Zelnaga writings or something on the ground too, in the center of the map. Oh my God, this is a whole new map. This is all crop circles, actually. Crop They're circle crop means, circles. No. If you zoom out far enough, it spells like dick butt. Yep, that's what aliens would write. That's what I mean, aliens you, would write. <laughs> if you were an alien that could like hide your presence to a new planet, would you write dick butt in their crops? No, wouldn't you draw dick butt? I would draw the dick butt from Overwatch. That they kind of. It's what? not like. It's not like really a dick butt, but it's basically. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is you, it like... you ever see the tag? And it's no. like a little weak guy. No. No. Oh, okay. Is it? Is this like an actual in-game Overwatch? It's not like a yeah, it's fan an made thing. Tag, right? It's one of the um, the decals, and it's just he doesn't have like a dick in his butt, but it's kind of like the same pose. <laughs> <and> like. <laughs> oh my god, that's really cheeky. Anyway, though. that's really cheeky. About dick butts. Yeah. Uh, double adept opening that you were talking about, Billowy loving so, so very much. And uh, is going to be following up with two more adepts. And one thing, again, I really like about Billowy, we'll see if he does it again this game. He moves in and he sends in the adept shades into the main base, and then he just is willing to back out if he sees that there was a uh, gas taken. But no, this game he is going to go for a little bit more of a sacrificial play with the adepts. Okay, so maybe four workers? 
five. Actually, the drones pile back in. Target I think fire goes get, down. Like, six almost. Maybe. There you go. Yeah, going to be able to get six. Going for All a right, seven. Can we, Can we get seven? It. You should have gas canceled. Oh, he gets seven. Right. Okay. Seven and another weakened drone for the next two adepts that were made. Uh, I don't think those adepts were sent out across the map, oh. though, were they? No. Ugh, billowy. Oh, you. Bottom left corner. Pylon going down. Oh. It's just over. Billowy takes the <laughs> final game of the Oliva League and takes it 3-0 with an epic game number three. E -e 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 -e. I think the most epic game number three we've ever seen. Probably. Hold on, hold on. I'm, like, still in the game because... So we had, like, seven drones die and two Zerglings and then two Adepts died. Okay. Well, you know, we were talking about how maybe Scarlet doesn't get super tilted, but... Maybe she does. <laughs> maybe she's just better at hiding it. Um, uh, maybe? I don't know. It's don't also know. maybe too late in Korea and she's like, F this. Yeah, yeah, possibly. Regardless, a big congratulations goes to Billui, who uh, ends up taking the final game 3-0 and is going to qualify for that monthly finals. Yay! Yeah. I mean, it's to note that, like, winning is basically instant qualification, but getting second mm -hmm. place just means, like, get any more points and you'll probably be in. Yeah, like, uh, three more points uh, and also $50. Scarlet walks away with that. Uh, soloist and super... It was super, right? Uh, yeah, soloist and super... Both walk away with $25 and two points. And all the quarter finalists, we have Keen, Oracle, Natural, and Sulky who walk away with at least one point to uh, help qualify for the monthly finals. But uh, mm -hmm. good games all around, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to hop to one final commercial break before we do our shoutouts. And uh, then Zombie Grub's going to head out, and I'm going to hop over to the DreamHack North American Valencia qualifier stream. So we'll be back in a bit.